Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Richard Mitwitty of University Lutheran Church, the campus ministry serving the Austin area. Filling in for Pastor Heckman as he's he's somewhere else today. I don't know where he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Maybe you guys do. I don't know. Um, but it's great to be uh, back with you again here and to uh, also take the, the opportunity to, to personally thank you from University Lutheran Church uh, for your support uh, all, throughout the year. Uh, I know there's been special offerings that you've done like during Lent and Advent, and uh, we uh, happily re received those as, as a great privilege and blessing. So thank you all very much for that. Uh, Carl, Rep, has some uh, announcements he's got to give to you here. He thinks that uh, everyone has won the lottery and has... Uh, Thank you, Carl. I understand that you are able to share the peace with each other again. So let's take time to do that in Christian Fellowship to share God's peace with each other. All right, I'll come over here. I'll come over here. God's peace with you. I can make it out. Peace of the Lord with you. God's peace. God's peace with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace. God's peace to you too. Peace of the Lord. Thank 
Brother Kenny having health issues? He's in rehab now. Oh, Yes, ma'am. Blessings on my brother's wedding yesterday and uh, prayers for my dad who's having a surgical procedure on Tuesday. Both the eggs. Blessings for the wedding and blessings and protection for Ed and his medical procedure. That's this week? Yes. Sure. confession and absolution, beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together then, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and it's for his sake that he forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
fire will burn up Bethel with no one to put it out. Doom to you who turn justice into poison and throw righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who judges at the city gate, and they reject the one who speaks the truth. Truly, because you crush the wheat and because you tax their grain, you have built houses of hard stone, but you will not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you will not drink their wine. I know how many are your crimes and how numerous are your sins, afflicting the righteous, taking money on the side, turning away the poor who seek help. Therefore, the one who is wise will keep silent in that time. It is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of heavenly forces, will be with you, just as you have said. Take evil, love good, and establish justice Perhaps the Lord God of heavenly forces will be gracious to what is left of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our epistle reading this morning comes from Hebrews 3. Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that none of you have an evil, unfaithful heart that abandons the living God. Instead, encourage each other every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you down the road, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I have kept all of these since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at this statement and went away saddened because he had many possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the next hymn.
God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The verses in the Gospel reading today are, are sometimes misemphasized to characterize Christianity. Usually it's emphasized where Jesus is talking about the commandment of what you're supposed to do. Don't commit murder, don't commit adultery, all that. There's a list there that, that had there. And people emphasize Christianity as being all about loving God and loving others. And these verses are also kind of sometimes are mis, mis, uh, emphasized to characterize that, that being rich is bad and having possessions is bad and get, getting rid of money and all that is, is good. Well, that view promotes what I like to call dependency on the law. And by law, we mean the do's and don'ts that God has for, for people. The law focuses on you. It focuses on what people do. Depending on the law is all kind of self-absorbed. For example, this guy who comes to Jesus, what does he ask? He asks, what must I do to obtain eternal life? What do I have to do? What's my responsibility? What's my job? What do I have to do? And, and Jesus' response is great. Jesus is always good at, at, at not answering questions. You ever notice that people ask him a question and he, and he says something, he responds with something that really gets beyond the question the person asked him here. And, and, and he responds with, why do you call me good? Basically, only God is good. See how Jesus changes focus. This guy wants to know, what do I have to do? What, he's, he's talking about, you know, about me. And God already is trying to change his focus to God. He's trying to change his dependency. Because this guy depends on the law. And so Jesus goes on, and he gives him the law. He says, well, you know, these are the things that you're supposed to do. Ten Commandments and all that. He, he, he lists all those. And the guy replies, yeah, yeah, Jesus, I, I already do those things. I have been for a long time. He's got a long time dependency problem on the law. It's interesting that he's asking, well, what more do I have to do? He, he's so insecure in his keeping of the law. He wants to know, how can I do it better? I need more law. You know, give me more here. And Jesus' reply is even greater. <laughs> it's great. He, he looks at him carefully, and he loves him. Jesus must have been thinking to himself often, bless your heart. That's kind of a joke, you guys. <laughs> Looking at this guy, Jesus probably had this permanent mark on his forehead from face palming all the time. He, goes, God, he looks at him, and he loves him. He has pity on him. Jesus knows what this guy is depending on. He knows that he depends on the law. And that kind of dependency is, I call it deficient, because it really isn't enough. Jesus' is, response is, it's like he's kind of saying to him, have you really kept them? You are lacking one thing, he says. He gives him something more to do, but that's not really what he's asking him to do here. Jesus is kind of saying, have you really kept the law? Have you really done all these things? Have you done them perfectly? And you can tell that in Jesus, in his next response, he says, okay, if you think you're doing everything, okay, well, here's more for you to do. And this is really just a, an example of hyperbole of Jesus. It's, it's an exaggeration. He really doesn't mean that if you just do all of these things here, if you if you sell your money and give money and give it to the poor and, and all of that, 
he, he doesn't mean that that's going to get him eternal life. He's getting him to change his dependency. Again, because it's deficient. It's not enough. Jesus knows that this guy depends on the law. And he knows he's rich. And that money's not bad. But depending on it is. Is all wrapped up in. That's what he's dependent on is, what do I have to do? And it's ironic, Jesus gives him something to do, and he walks away sad because he really doesn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'll do all of these things, God. I won't commit adultery, I won't steal, I won't cheat or give false testimony, but that giving up money, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. This guy depends on the law. And depending on it is is just, it's just futile. You can't do enough. You can't own enough. Again, the focus is all on him. What do I have to do? It's depending on self. And it's futile to think that a non-eternal human being can gain eternal life on their own. A non-eternal human being can't gain something eternal just on their own, by what they do, or by what they own, or any of that. Our attempt at good isn't good enough. We can't do enough. And the law of God shows this to us. If we're honest, we look at that list of things of, of uh, don't commit murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't give false testimony. Don't you? If we're honest, no, we have not kept all of those things since we were a boy or a girl. We can't depend on that. Jesus is pointing out to him and to us not what we should do. He's pointing out what we really can't do. You can't depend on the law. You can't depend on yourself. You're not good. Only God is good. We have to depend on God, on Jesus. We can't depend on the law, so we must depend on the gospel. And the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is, is dependency not on us, but on what he has done. Jesus has done everything we need for eternal life in his death and in his resurrection from the dead. Jesus is showing this guy and us today the futility of thinking that you can do anything when there's no way you could even begin to do anything close to being enough to obtain eternal life. He's got to change our focus from the law of doing to the gospel of what's been done. And that is good news. Well, it's sort of good news. I mean, Americans, we really like to do. We really like to work hard. We really like to achieve and, and be responsible and, 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 and be successful. And that just doesn't work in the kingdom of God. I mean, it's bad news for us when we say, I, I'm going to work hard and I still don't accomplish anything. In, 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 in matters of salvation, it's what God has done. And that is good news because can't do it, but it's been done for us. We've got to change focus. We've got to change dependency. We can't depend on the law because we can't depend on us to keep it. We must depend on Christ because he not only can keep it, but he's died and risen again to forgive us for when we don't keep it. We have to depend on that. overlooked in there, but Jesus just says to the guy, follow me. Don't follow you. Don't follow what you do. Don't follow your possessions, but follow me. Following Jesus is really focusing on him and depending on him. We follow him to the cross. We follow him to his empty grave, and we drop all dependency on ourselves and what we do and what we own, and we need to follow him and depend on him. Because that's where eternal life is. Jesus asked his disciples one time, you know, are you guys ever going to leave me? And, and one of them says to him, Lord, where will we go? 
you have the words of eternal life. This guy in the story, his dependency was on what he does, on his money. We all have our own dependencies that we think we like to trust. But it's not enough. When it comes to salvation, to obtain eternal life, you can't have dependency on what you do. It is a gift that is given to you. And whenever we depend on other things, when we depend on ourselves, and when we depend on what we do, when we depend on our own self-justification, Jesus responds to us the same way he did with this guy. He looks at us carefully, and he loves us. Has pity on us and forgives us. There's great comfort in that. That what we can't do, yeah, it's frustrating to think that, you know, I, I, I can't do it. I'm a failure. I'm, in, I'm, I'm incomplete. I'm, I'm deficient. And that is true. The good news is, in salvation, it doesn't matter. Depend on Jesus, who is totally sufficient your eternal life. No one's good except God. But we all know that, right? Jesus is that God who is good. We depend on Him in all things. I think a great way to show that dependency is that um, when we re receive the Lord's Supper up here, we kneel. <coughs> Kneeling is a very vulnerable position. Isn't it? Yes, you're very, very vulnerable to, to anything that can be done. We're, we're, we're vulnerable and showing, I'm depending on you, Lord, here to serve me, to feed me, to forgive me. We depend on him. We can't follow our goodness into eternal life. We must follow Jesus and depend on him. Everything else is just totally deficient. It's empty. It's not enough. Praise God that in Jesus Christ we have all that we need and can depend on it for eternal life. Amen. Now may the grace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. Confess our, our faith together. We stand to confess. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. O Lord, God of hosts, reveal our sin to us through your word. Do not let us dare to approach you in our own righteousness, but rather to come before you humbly in repentance, depending on all things that we need for eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of hosts, keep us from hating those whom you send to correct us with your law, and from hating those who speak your truth to us, that we might repent and live, depending on your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God of hosts, sanctify us with your Holy Spirit, that we may hate evil and never pursue it, but instead to love good and seek it always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God of hosts, let your favor be upon all who govern us, establish good works of their hands, that they, they, they uh, create good um, laws and uh, decrees for all people and all communities, that all may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord, God of hosts, have pity on all those who are afflicted in body or soul. Satisfy them with your steadfast love in Christ, and grant health and healing in accord with your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, God of hosts, satisfy our longing hearts with your steadfast love here in the feast of Christ's body and blood, that we, we may rejoice and be glad in it, and always depend upon the forgiveness of our sins given in Christ's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord God of hosts, we give thanks to all your saints whose confidence in Christ is kept firm until the end, and that you would graciously keep us firm in that same faith, that in the end we enter with them into eternity in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. During the offertory, you have opportunity to uh, place your offerings into the uh, plate in the back if you brought them here, and then we will continue with uh, the uh, sacrament.
Gracious Lord, we give you but your own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is yours alone, but trust, O Lord. Continue then with the service of the sacrament. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who on this day your Son, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead, and that all that we need for eternal life has been given to us in the gift of his life, death, and resurrection for our eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. And gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship of the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, depending always on Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.